Now, Robert Dunn has worked for Opportunity International for six years, and we welcome him onto the show. Robert, it's great to have you here. Thank you, Keith. Uh, um, I know, and some of our viewers will know from different times, that David Bassar has an amazing story of how it all began. Tell us a little bit about what Opportunity International is. Sure. Opportunity International is a not-for-profit organisation in Australia, and we exist to help poor people in uh, developing countries transform their lives. We, we do this through a, a microfinance, uh, and that's a number of things, but at its, at its heart, it's a small loan, mm. uh, almost invariably made to a woman who is very poor. And her issues might be, uh, has she got enough food to feed her children? Um, can she afford to send her children to school? Uh, with this loan, she will start a new business, we'll help her, our partners will help her do that, earn an income and then be able to, Rob, to do those things. Rob, what sort of businesses are we talking about, just to get a feel of it? Yeah, sure. It depends on where, on, on where she lives. So the, some, of the, some of the people are in cities, some are in, in the country rural areas, but typically it could be um, agriculture, it could be animals, so raising, raising and breeding pigs or milking a cow. Um, it could be a little um, retail store where she's buying and selling uh, goods for the community, a tea shop, uh, bicycle repair shop, it could be anything. Let me just ask that question. You just in passing said it, it's invariably a woman. Now, why is that the case? Yeah, there's a few reasons. Uh, women are... Uh, when you look at who is poor in the world, um, more women are poor. Women... women um, uh, uh, more women than men are poor, uh, firstly. Secondly, often the man of the family is doing whatever he can to earn income, and he's not with the family. He might be far away doing a day labour job, and she's left at home. So she has the ability around the home to start some of these small businesses. Mm -hmm. um, we also know that this is an empowerment play. Um, microfinance, um, can, it, this can be the first time that she is respected by her community. She's earning income. She's looking after her family. Uh, that's, why she, that's why they do it, almost invariably. Um, so it's a dignity play. It's an empowerment play. As well. and, it, and it strikes at the heart of the kind of injustice of poverty, doesn't it? Yeah, poverty is injustice. When you look at the world today and you say, if, if God designed a great world, you know, what, is, what has gone wrong in the world? Poverty stands out. Mm. It is an injustice. And... Uh, you know, we say the Lord's Prayer, kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. I think God's really interested in people doing things to take the world to a kingdom uh, place, if you like. Anecdotally, then, what's one of the highlights for you? Oh, there's been many. I, get, I, I have the privilege of going to the countries we work. We, we mainly focus in Asia, uh, in, and particularly Philippines, Indonesia and India. Um, uh, the very first uh, client, microfinance client I met was a lady called Lorna. She, ran, she runs a dressmaking shop. She employs three other women in her shop, including her mother. And her husband has come back from this day labour business and he's running a tea shop in her dressmaking shop as well. So that was client one, entrepreneurial lady. So just let me tell me, what sort of finance would she have had at the beginning? Uh, she would have had a loan of less than $100. Mm. And in the Philippines, she would have repaid that in weekly instalments for six months. Mm. And um, that doesn't do a lot, frankly, $100. But what it does do, these are people with no assets. To, these are uncollateralised loans, unsecured loans, no credit history. So they're borrowing, you know, who would lend like that? She gets the chance to get a bigger loan after she's repaid that loan. Then she's up and going. What's the payback rate on the, you know, I mean, we talk about banks default, what's it yeah, like? Yeah, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's um, consistently better than 97%. Mm -hmm. The poor are a great credit risk and it's because they're desperate to get their families out of poverty. They do this so their kids don't have the sort of lives that mm. they have had. I think the big four banks would be very happy. Oh, they'd be thrilled. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> unsecured <laughs> com uh, consumer lending, yes. yes it's unheard of here. Yeah. Rob, one of the things that, that, that's true is the Christian nature of, mm. of Opportunity International. Mm. Board representatives, a, a, a real sense of Christian commitment. Yeah. Tell us a bit about your own faith journey. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I, I was privileged to not only grow up in this country, um, but to grow up in a Christian home, um, been to church since I can remember, um, used to do all the right things, 
do, do well in Sunday school exams. All, you'd be, you would have been very pleased with me as a youngster. Um, and and that, that all sort of seemed to make sense until I was a teenager. Mm. And at that point, I realised that this was somewhat shallow. I knew in my head that God was a great God, that he uh, loves us. Um, but there, there wasn't an appropriation into my heart of that. And um, it was when I... It was when I did appropriate that, when I, when I realised that God actually cared for me as an individual sure. and his love extended even to me, and because I'm a fairly flawed individual, um, that uh, this became personal and real. How then did you get into Opportunity International? Because you haven't been doing this all your life. No, no, I have a business career. I mean, at, at the end of university, I spent five weeks backpacking around India to see what the other half lived, what the rest of the world lived like, if yeah. you like. Um, but then I promptly went and became an accountant and worked in business. Um, and it was, um, now I can say things like, at, at the right time, God decided that it was ready for me to come to opportunity. But at the time, it seemed that I'd finished one job and I was thinking about what to do next. And Opportunity International was looking for a particular person. Uh, and, and I went, oh, I'm not sure I want to do that. But one of the things that's always been important to me is legacy. I want, all through my life, I've wanted to do things that were significant and left a legacy. Um, I think this is quite a common trait. Uh, uh, so all, when I learned about opportunity, I thought, you know what, that's significant. Mm. Uh, God does care about justice and hurting people. And uh, anyone who's, you don't have to be an Indian or a F Filipino hurting through poverty, anyone hurting here in Australia, uh, God cares about you. And that's my experience. And the interesting thing is for people who have been blessed by God, there's a responsibility to do something about that. What have you learned, really, from, from, from doing this work? Um, a couple of things. Firstly, about people. Uh, I remember the uh, first, first time that I went to India with opportunity, I was sitting in a village, a rural village with some Muslim women, and I thought, this couldn't be more different. Mm. I'm a business guy in Sydney. Um, here I am sitting under a tree with a bunch of women in nowhere land India. Mm. And when we were talking to each other, you know what was so obvious, their issues were my issues, their dreams were my dreams, their concerns were my concerns about their kids, that they grow up responsibly, that they be caring. It was exactly the same. So this sort of, of naive light bulb went on, which is people are the same. Um, and, and, and another thing I've learned is that God really cares about justice. Mm -hmm. I sort of knew that, but not really till you see injustice do you really know how much God cares about, in, about doing things about injustice. Mm -hmm. And, and you realise, I mean, there is a person who's been involved in the business world who would have never in a million years have thought of uh, doing business in the way you do now. No. But you've seen it does actually make a difference. It does make a difference. It's grassroots, it's economics. You, you know, you might say it's, it's very grassroots, sort of individual family, community finance or whatever. Um, it's not just loans, it's things like health insurance. Mm. We take it for granted. If you get sick, you mm. have health insurance. Or um, pension, superannuation. We're bringing some of those things to far, these sort of people. Right, in two or three sentences, what about Opportunity International in the future? OK, we, we, need, we want to do this with more and more. We, we, we've got a great program in the Philippines, a great and growing program in India. Indonesia is on our doorstep. We, it's where David started mm. uh, in Indonesia. We have uh, a, a, a solid program there, but we could do so much more with Indonesia. That's our dream. So you'll be able to get more details through our website links uh, to yours, uh, I hope. Thank you very much indeed, Rob, for coming on the programme. Been a pleasure, Keith.